So this is the computer I just recently built for my wife. It's an R5 5600G, uh, 32 gig DDR4, 32 megahertz, one terabyte M.2 SSD, uh, 500 watt bronze rated power supply. A uh, tempered glass case. Obviously, I have the glass off it right now. The total build for this was $427. I could have done it slightly cheaper, but I decided to go with a nicer case. I wanted a bronze rated power supply. I wanted dual channel RAM instead of one single stick. And, you know, wanted a, like I said, wanted a, one of the better looking end, end computer. Get a little bit more. Uh, I decided to go with RGB. I'm not a big fan of RGB, but my grandkids will use this to game on when they're over here. So I threw some RGB on there. You can get cases on Amazon for as little as $39.99. They're functional. They work. And... You could do it cheaper. Like I said, you could go with single, single stick of RAM. Uh, you could put a smaller SSD in there and probably knock at least $80 off your build cost. That's up to you individually. I wanted a better looking end product. So instead of going through several minutes of, you know, screen capture time, uh, the Radeon software records everything. Fortnite, I'm running that in 1080p, performance mode, everything turned up to the max. I did get it to run in DX12 on this, but I think it looks better in performance mode with everything turned up. Red Dem Redemption, I've always found that a somewhat difficult game to run depending on the computer. That is running it at 900. I was able to get it to run at 1080p right around 28 frames. I can turn it all the way down to 720 and I can get it up to 58, 60 frames. But obviously you're lowering the resolution, you're lowering the, lowering the quality. Rocket League, that's one of my grandson's games. He loves that. 1080p, high settings. Valorant, 1080p, max settings on everything. Valorant's pretty easy to run and runs on most systems. But I wanted to throw that in there. That integrated graphics is pretty friggin' cool. In order to get the most out of your APU in this, you need to enable resizable bar. It shows right up in the basic settings of your BIOS. Easy to do. In order to get your RAM running right, I mean, you can overclock the RAM in these too. I put uh, 32 megahertz RAM in these. You need to go into the advanced mode and you need to enable that, otherwise it will see the RAM at 2,666 megahertz. Easy to do, you go into the advanced mode and just tell it to auto detect. And to get games like Valorant running, you need to go into your boot part of your BIOS and enable secure boot. Valorant will not run unless you enable secure boot. Easy to do. Again, boot, and then go to secure boot, and just tell it to enable. Again, in your BIOS, go to advanced mode, AI tweaker, and then you get it to detect your 3200 megahertz RAM. This is how you get your onboard graphics to run a little bit better. Again, go into advanced, go into NB configuration, come down to UME frame buffer size. I have mine set to auto. You can actually, because I have 32 gig of RAM, dedicate half of your system RAM to the integrated graphics on this, on this motherboard. This is the B550 motherboard on here. I don't know what, if the other ones are capable of it, but the B550 with this buys, this is the I, first thing I did when I did this computer was update the BIOS. But like I said, you can allocate up to half of your system RAM 
to your integrated graphics, which will get you a little bit better frame rates. Uh, make sure you're enable resizable bar. These are just some quick, simple BIOS things that will get you a little bit more. I mean, this is not a super powerful gaming computer, but you know, for a budget computer that you can build for three hundred fifty dollars, if you're willing to make some compromises, this thing is going to do extremely well. I would also suggest when you set this up, you can do this in easy mode on the BIOS. Change your CPU fan speed. I turned mine up. You know, I'm using the the base cooler on this that came with the processor. It'll just help keep things a little bit cooler. Okay, so there it all is. I'll put links to everything I bought, except for the uh, M.2 drive. I find a, a hell of a deal on them. <laughs> Friggin' Walmart. I picked up a one terabyte WD Blue M.2 for $42. But I can't remember. I think it's uh, Aura Case uh, Ryzen 5. 5600G, 32 gig, two sticks, DDR4, 3200 megahertz, B550 Wi-Fi motherboard. That is an AGV, 500 watt, bronze weighted rated power supply, which is plenty for this. And pretty pleased with it. The wife uses this for crafting. Uh, she does a lot of her own logo design and stuff. The Optiplex she had, it was just, it was beat, it was tired, it was time to get something better. And I really wanted the, the AGV, because I didn't want the mustard-colored cables in there. I mean, you can use cable extensions, and I also wanted a bronze-rated power supply. I mean, don't cheap out on the first thing that comes, and some people will say that that's a cheap power supply, but it's bronze-rated. The power size supply is probably going to blow up before it damages anything. But you can build one of these relatively cheap. I think you could probably squeeze it in at 350, 360. A lot of people build these with the 450 board. I wanted the 550 board. It's just better. And the one way to know, if you're looking at a pre-built, maybe you're watching this video because you're looking at one of these as a pre-built, they commonly use the 450 board or less. If you want to know if the motherboard is decent, because typically in those pictures, you might see a picture of the computer from the side. If it only has two RAM slots, this has four. Two of them are black, two of them are gray. If it only has two RAM slots, it's probably a cheap motherboard in there. But there we go. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the RGB is done on the computer itself. The controller is built into the board, you know, into the motherboard. But there we go. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just kind of battling at this point. That's it.